All right. Technology is always good for an unforeseen problem. And uh, the unforeseen problem that we had this time around was that my recording software stopped and just started acting up and squirreling around. And so uh, we are going to have to divide this video into, part, into two parts. And now there are four videos that I'll be linking to in this assignment. I mean, in this announcement. Uh, so I apologize for that. But this video, I guess, can serve as having given you a little bit of a break after the previous video. You finish the previous video, you eat a snack, you come back, you watch this one, and then you, learn, you know how to do interlibrary loan. So most of the time when you have to do interlibrary loan, it's going to be the case that, uh, well, interlibrary loan is used for when you can't access the article or the resource you're trying to get through uh, through Google Scholar or through the open internet, and you're also not able to access it, access it, access it immediately through Mizzou's um, collection, and that would be the case if Mizzou just doesn't have coverage of this uh, of the particular resource that you're looking for. However, I will say upon saying that that uh, you have already paid to use the interlibrary loan feature through your tuition, so you should go ahead and use it as much as you want because that is the way to get the most bang for your buck within your. Uh, how, that's how to get the most bang for your buck. Um, with your tuition dollars. And I would say even using interlibrary loan, if you want to use interlibrary loan to uh, get some things that you want to use uh, or you want to read for pleasure um, and not necessarily academic, the library does not keep track of whether or not you are using it for academic purpose or if you're using it for a personal purpose. So I would say anything that you want to get through interlibrary loan, go ahead and try to put the request in and see what happens. Especially if you live in Columbia or near Columbia, then you can also have physical materials interlibrary loaned and brought and you can pick them up from the zoo's library in person. So yes, if you have the ability to do those things, go ahead and do those things and get your money's worth out of your tuition. So here is how interlibrary loan works. And again, I've already kind of looked to see that this would not work. So a lot of times you would interlibrary loan things that are outside of the, uh, well, what you're going to interlibrary loan are going to be things that are outside the coverage um, area or the coverage dates for your resource within the zoo. Those. Oh, the fun of a runny nose. So uh, let's say that you wanted this guy here. Um, as you can see, there's no link. So we don't have that um, over the web access. And this is also actually something that I've already checked. And the zoo does not have access to this right away. So if you wanted this, you would need to interlibrary loan it. So what you can do is, first of all, you may want to click into the... Um, and you had this access through your institution that actually was not working uh, for me. So that's why I'm going to have to do this. Um, but yes, let's say you wanted to go ahead and do this. Then what you can do is if you wanted to request something from Interlaborate Loan, then you would do request an item. All right. And once you do request an item, oh, Lord, they've updated this a little bit. I'm OK. Yeah, let's just do the Interlaborate Loan service over here. This is precisely what I was looking for. Let's go for it. All right. Okay. And they have, yeah, they've changed the way this looks. This is why I have to do videos every semester, by the way, as opposed to just recycling my videos. Is because the interfaces are always are changing how they look and updating how they look and everything. So we've got new requests and we are going to request an article here. So this is how this is going to work. And while you only are required to fill out the uh, the fields that say required, the more information you give, the better. So I'm not even going to uh, bother with the ISSN right now. I'm just going to start filling in this information. And you can get a pretty good uh, you can get a pretty good synopsis or a pretty good um, look at the information you need by looking at a sample citation. So we've got that here. And so uh, title, this is the title of the actual publication that we're looking for. And so the title of the publication is library review. So we'll put that there. The article title, I'll just copy and paste. It's going to be this here. Author, we can just put Cleveland. Okay, volume and issue. If we have it, it'll be here, and we do. It's volume 53, issue 3. 
two, three. Uh, I don't know if we have a month, but that's not required anyway. Let's just put our year 2004 inclusive pages. That's going to be 177 to 185. And I would usually give them uh, two weeks if possible. Um, in summer school, that's not necessarily going to be possible. They fill about 95% of their interlibrary loan requests within 72 hours. However, uh, you may want to give them a week. So let's give them a week. Let's do seven. Let's do seven. There we go. Let's do seven, six, 2022. Uh, probably will leave this as we will only take it. English, nothing else is required, and then you just submit request. And once you once you submit request, you'll see that your request will be listed in your outstanding request. And what happens here is that the interlibrary loan staff within the zoo, what they do is they reach out to other libraries through OCLC, and OCLC will usually uh, link them to a library that will actually have the uh, access to what they're looking for. There's usually a small fee that's paid. The library obtains what is um, available at the other library. And then they email you, letting you know that the digital download of the article you requested is available. And then you would log back onto the interlibrary loan system. And you would usually have about 30 days to, uh, to download that full text of what you requested. And then after that 30 days, the copyright expires or the copyright access expires and you're no longer allowed to uh, get the publication and then if you do need it from there you'll just have to do another interlibrary uh, loan request. So it would be my recommendation that once you have put in an interlibrary loan request, to, I mean once you have actually gotten a message that your interlibrary loan request has been filled, I would go ahead and just log in, download that article, save it somewhere and just keep it and that way you don't have to worry about losing it later. Okay, so that's how interlibrary loan works. And you may want to use interlibrary loan in order to get sources for your Wikipedia edit assignment and as well as getting sources for the papers that you do or whatever projects or anything that you do for the remainder of your time in the program. So I'm going to leave that there and there's no real reason to uh, say anything else. Actually, uh, we pretty much covered what we needed to cover today. Um, so I am going to leave it right there. I am Dr. Jace and um, I don't know, Star Wars takes place in outer space, but we'll leave it at that. And I will see you next week to talk a little bit about the Wikipedia edit assignment. Later.